Okay. So the last pre-recorded video that you're going to have for this introduction is about what we call reaction quotients, or capital Q. Um, lowercase q means charge, so we have to be very careful. Uppercase Q is quotient, and it's the same thing as a K. So in other words, a rea oh, that's fancy. Got all fancy. A reaction quotient is still all um, products divided by reactants. And if you have coefficients, those become um, exponents and, and stuff like that. So it's, it's defined as the same, same thing as K. The difference is we can use Q when we're not positive if it's, if it's actually an equilibrium position or not. So say we just get a whole bunch of concentrations and the question being posed is, is this at equilibrium? What you do is you find the value for the Q, because you don't know it's at equilibrium, and you'll compare to a reference K. If, if in fact Q and K are equal to each other, then it was an equilibrium all along. If Q is bigger, right, so say our K value is, I don't know, I'm going to just say if K is 10, that would come from your textbook. But we calculate a Q of 100, right? That means that we have more products than we need, right? So let's just think of an example problem. We'll just uh, go back to this generic thing, not real chemicals, right? So if we had more products than we needed, that implies if our Q is bigger than our K, that implies the reaction has to go in the reverse direction in order to consume some of the extra product and produce more reactant. So if we have a Q bigger than the K, the reaction always goes backward to the left. If, on the other hand, we have a Q where it's less than the K, that means I have too many reactants, not enough products, right? Too many reactants, not enough products. So that's going to cause the reaction to shift forward. So when Q is less than K, reaction goes forward. I kind of think about it like the arrows go the wrong way. So what I mean by that is if I have Q greater than K, my reaction arrow goes like, you know, the opposite of this arrow and vice versa down here, right? So like that. The other way to think about it is it's going to you know, like sh shift in the direction that compensates mathematically. So if I have too many products, that gets consumed. However you want to remember it, it's up to you. Okay, so here's an example of that, right? And so this is the same reaction we saw before. Here's the K value for it. And the question is asking, is it at equilibrium or is it not at equilibrium? I do want to point out one important thing here, though. These are molarities, right? So we would normally have um, KC for that. Sometimes they will be tricky and they will give you reactions, which are gas phase, just like this. And instead of giving you molarities, they will give you pressure. It's important to understand that there is an equation to convert pressures and concentrations, but the Ks are not equal to each other. So when you're using molarity, the K is not the same as if you're given pressure. Okay, so always pay attention. This says Kc is 50.5. That means we use molarity, so everything is fine in this problem, but it's definitely something to watch out for. Okay, so your task is solve this. Is it at equilibrium? I'm going to put this in the learning check. 